So we have a mission for today. We're going to try and fly a kite. It's uh, a little bit breezy, but not really very breezy. But we've come up to, uh, this is called the Miminga Zon Plateau. Um, and it's very pretty, surrounded by mountains. And when I say surrounded, as usual here, I'm not exaggerating at all. Um, so I'm going to put the kite together. This is a kite we picked up at the supermarket. Let's see how we get on. So there's Charlie Brown running along with his uh, kite. It's got it stuck in almost every tree so far, but it's now finally flying and there's no wind at all. So next time we'll wait for a bit more wind. So about once a day, I log into the uh, surveillance camera of the house in Italy. Um, and I thought I'd share just a, a quick clip with you. It's not very exciting because not much is happening, but as you can see, the sun is shining, spring has arrived, everything's in bloom. Um, and as soon as this quarantine nightmare is over, um, I shall be straight back down there and you'll see me doing lots and lots and lots of work. So uh, now it's probably time to get back on with the car. Well, good morning, and surprisingly, I've woken up to this. It's been snowing again. It's still snowing now. Uh, it's now Tuesday the, it's going to be the 13th, I think, 13th of April. Um, and it's snowing again, so luckily I haven't put my summer tires on the car yet. Um, but after the weekend where we were kiting, it's a bit of a surprise. Okay, well, despite the snow, we're going to get on. Um, it took almost two weeks for these parts to arrive. Um, well, I'm not particularly happy with the parts store, but they do seem to have everything in stock. They're just very slow, uh, and they seem to be very, very poor when it comes to returns, because there was one, one item I wanted to return, uh, and they're, they're not very good about that, so we'll see. But anyway, in the meanwhile, I have new bolts for the brake caliper, the screws for the brake disc, new bolts for the other brake caliper. I'm going to change them both out because I'm assuming that they're the same. I've got some thread cutters, brake cleaner, WD-40, and some copper paste. And I'm just going to take the whole thing to bits now, uh, clean it all up, and then hopefully it should go nicely back together. Okay, so first things first, these are the new bolts, hopefully that will focus. Uh, and what we have to do is measure 
the size of the thread. Now I've done that already. I have this little thing that came with the uh, with the die cuts. And when you put it on and it fits perfectly, then that's exactly right. So that's 1.25. So I'll show you, uh, I just pop out another one, like 1.5. then it just doesn't sit as you can see it doesn't work so it's 1.25 which means i've got the right die cutters which are here and the bottom hole drilled down this one here is the one we drilled out the top one's fine the bottom one's drilled out so we're going to go through that and this will get rid of all the rest of the little bits of metal and what have you for next time i do have some removers um that you just drill a little pilot hole and then twist them out someone did leave a comment to that in the in the comments and i found it, the product and bought it straight away so thank you very much for that right let's uh, try and cut this back to to straight Okay, so if you look at once through with the with the first die cut, you can see a bit of rust on there. Got rid of most of what was left of the bolt in there. There are three for a hole, so you start with two, one, then zero. You see there's some stripes on them. Uh, this one's very tapered uh, and isn't quite as wide. And then the third one actually cuts it to the exact thread so that it ends up just like the bolt there. So I'm going to run run it through both of the holes quickly the big one now I don't need to go through all of the different ones because it was actually cut I just got rid of the uh, the bad metal that was in there see there's still a little bit there that's just what we drilled out so we've pretty much tidied that up the top one's pretty good um, and then I'm going to take this off I'm going to give that a quick spray with some black paint just to stop it rusting anymore because it's not through but it doesn't look very pretty and you can see it's copper grease everywhere here um so then we'll be copper greasing up uh get this out as well because i've got the new screws for that as well and then we can put the whole thing together back together okay so the holes are done now it's just a matter of pulling these apart and swapping them out this one's already broken it's broken rubber there and when it's out i'm going to give it a quick wire brush down the seal is still good everything else is still good so uh the caliper is seems to be fine the brake line is very good i've checked the brake line very thoroughly which is surprising for the age um and i was going to change it but we've got a lot of things to change so we're going to go through it one by one so we got that out the top rubber is okay as is the pipe so in goes this one There we go. And there's our spacer. And that's it, pretty much. So down to this screw here. Whoops, you can't see that. Down here. Uh, get that out and see. Uh, and put, yeah, no, clean it up, what paint it, and then put the whole thing back together.
so so there you go that's much better screw in everything's clean and tidy we've got our new bolts uh, everything's set up exactly as it should be um, so just wipe off the excess grease there because it's uh, not harmful but it's not pretty and pop some grease in the holes put the, uh, the wheel back on and we should be good for this side and I can get on and do the other side so again you know it was uh, just a case of doing it properly um, I have these extractors if we go wrong on the other side um, I've got WD-40 I'm certainly much better prepared than I was so let's see how we get on over there so if you look Big Brother's popped by this is uh, a friend's car and compared to the Mark II, that being a Mark VII, it's huge. It's absolutely enormous. Obviously, a few more creature comforts inside. It's a very swish car. But, uh, I don't know, I do kind of like the Mark II. I've got the garage door open so it's a bit louder than normal that's uh, because of the fumes so um i've done the petrol pump that went very smoothly um no leaks at all feel much much happier about that there's no faffing about it just went straight in and sat perfectly and it was a little bit more expensive but on things like that probably better to spend the extra 10 euros uh, for a bit of peace of mind um so the last thing we're going to do today is find out where the coolant leak is coming from uh, and for that I'm going to pressurize the system. Okay so this is definitely a don't try this at home. Um, what we're going to do is put some pressure into the cooling system. Very very little pressure. Uh, the cap goes off uh, I think at about 15 psi I think so probably even less than that. Um, I'm going to turn it right down on the compressor and then we're gonna try and put some air in it and see where it comes out, where the water comes out. Okay, might have overcooked it there slightly. Let's see how that is, that should be. 
hopefully a little more than a light breeze. That sounds about right. Now here I've got my air pistol and this is a plastic bung of uh, one of those pumps to unblock your toilet. Oh, I'm just going to pop that on here, push it down. And I can see a drip down there. And that seems to be the only drip. There's nothing coming off the engine block yet. It all looks okay so far. And the water pump is over there. So, yeah, there's definitely water coming out there. Let's see what we can find underneath. It's definitely coolant. And it's coming, it would appear, out of the radiator. In fact, I see a smack there for some reason. I don't know quite what's happened there, but you can see it's coming right out of the radiator. So, <coughs> what we'll do... Find out here. Yeah, it looks like it, something's hit it at some point, which is strange. Uh, that looks a bit rusty. But let's, um, it's just that one and that one. Take off the pipes and the fan, the fan cowling. Uh, so I'm going to do that now, see if we can get the radiator out, so if I can order a new one. Okay, top and bottom pipes are off. Um, obviously some, well, flush the whole system at the end because there's some grime in there. Uh, connected down into my little general purpose tub. I've got the wire off for the fan. So now it's just those two bolts that we looked at. Hopefully not too rusty. We should be okay. Bolts are out. It's wiggling about. But there is a cowling on the front of it that's stopping me just pulling it out. And for that, I think we're going to have to take off this. The grill doesn't look very complicated, so I'll give that a go now. There we go, yeah, that was just a set of clips here one, two, three, four, and then these little ones here on the corner. Uh, and that gives me access to these bolts here, at which point I should just be able to. There you can see where it's all wet down there. There you can see them. I don't know what happened there. It's surprising because she didn't mention anything. I did ask if there was anything wrong with the car. Maybe she didn't notice. Maybe it was a, quite a slow leak. Because when it was running, I didn't see water coming out. It's only when I tilt it or squish the pipes. Well, we'll see. Um, so I'm going to take this cowling off here, that, there, and then while it's empty, it probably makes sense to change the water pump and the tiling belt. But for today, I'm just going to take the radiator out so that I can order a new one. Okay. So I've got it out, the leak is obviously there, I'm not quite sure what happened there but something's given up. Um, they're pretty cheap so I'm not too worried about that. Um, I'm going to measure it, order another one and um, we'll have to take off all of the ancillaries, so the fan and that, we'll give them a clean up while they're off. Uh, and I might do the engine bay clean in fact while everything's out as well and obviously the timing belt. Okay, well, that's it for today. Uh, pretty good progress. Brakes are done, um, except, of course, bleeding, as I mentioned earlier. We got the radiator out, so that'll be another big step. Ready to do the timing belt cooling system um, and take it for its uh, MOT equivalent, so the, uh, the check to see if it's roadworthy, without which we won't be able to drive it. So, um, so not bad day. Much better than last week. It's a real shame that... Uh, not mentioning any names, uh, were incredibly, incredibly slow uh, and unhelpful in getting the parts to me. Uh, they don't even mention delivery times on their website, which I think is EU law, but there we go. Uh, they did turn up in the end and they do work and they're not very expensive. But, uh, but if I was running a garage, I certainly wouldn't be able to use them because I'd have all of the, my clients' cars parked everywhere. So, um, 
that's about it. Uh, there is some information from Italy which I shall update very soon uh, as soon as I've got confirmation but there might be some very good news there uh, and hopefully we'll be getting out to Italy again soon but uh, for now thank you very much for watching um, I hope it was a little bit interesting a little bit informative and a little bit fun and I'll see you hopefully very very soon take care for now bye bye